Brand new product alert! Burr, burr, burr. Hi everyone and welcome to the Don'ts Own Cooking Show, the show where I teach you how to use our products to level up your home cooking. I'm your host Victor Salazar and today we are making carne asada with our brand new product, taco truck seasoning. Officially released October 1st on our website, we are so excited to share this brand new flavor with you all because this seasoning is truly something special. We have carefully mixed the perfect blend of herbs and spices to recreate that authentic street taco flavor. And as you can see, there is obviously no shortage of seasoning in here. Our new five pound bag allows you to be as generous as you'd like while preparing your food. Not to mention, you can utilize the size of the bag to cater for larger gatherings or restaurants. Now enough about this, and let's get into what you're gonna need to cook along with me. Now if you aren't aware, we've actually prepared carne asada on the show before using our original meat seasoning. Click up here to check that video out, it's pretty good. However, unlike before, we won't be using orange juice as a binding agent to help them marinate along. What we're gonna do is just the taco truck seasoning because there's so much flavor packed inside. So let's grab a tin or something that you can place the meat inside of while we season it. Cooking pro tip, when you're seasoning meat in a stack like this, season both sides of the first piece, but you don't have to worry about seasoning the underside of the other ones because it's gonna grab the seasoning from the top layer of the one below it. Let's get seasoning. Grab your meat, make sure all the flaps are uh, opened up. Open up your seasoning, and we're gonna generously coat both sides. Okay, once that's done, let's flip it over, season the other side. All right, now let's go ahead and stack on the rest of it and we'll just kind of time lapse this for you guys. Our meat is gonna marinate in the fridge, covered for 30 minutes minimum, up to two hours, your preference. So while those flavors are getting to know each other in the fridge, let's prep our grill. So we have our grill on the tabletop. Now, the optimal temperature for cooking this is around 350 degrees Fahrenheit. That being said, if you're more used to seeing the charred edges and char lines, what you're gonna wanna do is sear it first, and that's what we're gonna do today. So to be a proper searing temperature, we're gonna want it about 500 degrees. So we're gonna go ahead and crank this to our sear setting. And when this light is green, we'll go ahead and place the meat on the grill. So it's looking like we're almost done. You can tell the smoke is kind of rising. Green light hasn't gone off yet, but what we're gonna do is utilize the cook time here because it's probably only gonna cook for about a minute, minute and a half on each side because these are thinner cuts and we just want charred edges. Then we'll lower our temperature to finish the cook. Wow, look at that. Let's get grilling. All right, we got our beautiful cuts here. Now remember, we don't wanna overcrowd the grill. That's definitely not what you wanna do because you're just gonna, it's gonna take away from the cook. Should hear a nice, beautiful sizzle when this lays. All right, one minute, and then get a separate tray to put the cooked meat in once these are done. Sounds pretty good sizzling. We're just gonna go ahead and check the underside for char. Yeah, that's already getting beautiful color. I love it, we'll flip this over. Look at that, look at that, it's beautiful. I'm gonna go another minute on that side. All right, this one's looking pretty good. So we'll take this one off, get another piece on. Small piece right there. Same thing, rinse and repeat. All right guys, last piece here being flipped. Getting good char. And essentially what we're gonna do is after this one, we're gonna reduce the heat to about 300 degrees and let them cook for about one to two minutes each just to finish prepping it all the way through. All right, so since this piece of meat's already on here, we're just gonna go ahead and drop the temperature and let this one finish cooking off. And what we'll do is continue to cook every single piece of meat the same way. So let's just go ahead and flash forward to when these babies are pulled off the grill and resting. Okay. Bada bing, bada boom. And a cooking pro tip, while your grill is hot, go ahead and throw some tortillas on there. Add a little extra flavor and color. Let's pull these off. Go ahead and put them in a little paper towel so we can cover them and keep them warm. I kind of just like to go over, over, fold, 
boom. Now that we're done cooking, let's go ahead and clear the table. So the meat is resting, and now if you're like me, you're gonna want something a little extra on your tacos. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and make a onion, cilantro, and lime mix. Pretty self-explanatory. You're just gonna want a good amount of onion, depending on how many people you're serving, and a good amount of cilantro. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and grab a lime, roll it out, cut it, and you can use half a lime or a full lime, depending on how citrusy you like it. Go ahead and roll it out, and make sure you get more juice out of your limes. Now, if you have a juicer, you get more out of it. I just have my hands right now, so we're gonna use my hands. Tart. Additionally, what you can do to add a little extra something something is to put a pinch of salt in there. Salt is just gonna be your natural flavor enhancer and lift all the flavors in this mix. Mix it up. And boom, you got a taco topper. Go ahead and taste it for seasoning. Mm. It's ready and so are we. So let's go ahead and grab our taco meat, which has been resting. And we're gonna go ahead and transfer it onto a cutting board and cut these up pretty fine. Another little trick here is, see these lines? That is the grain of the meat. To make a more tender, delicious, easy to eat cut, you wanna cut against the grain. It's gonna cut the muscle fibers and make everything not super chewy. Okay, meat is done and chopped up. So it looks like a beautiful medium in there. Everything is cut, I'm gonna clear my station and let's make a taco. All right, simply put, let's grab our tortillas. Unravel like a present on Christmas day. Oh, it's so juicy. Grab a little bit of this and cheers. Mm-hmm. That is good. So let's talk about this taco truck seasoning. You have bigger chunks of chili in there. So it's not spicy, but you just get a little back end kick, which is something really nice. It really just wakes up your taste buds. It's kind of vibey, like with like a citrusy note, which is really aided by the cilantro limes uh, onion mix. It just, it adds all together. It combines this wonderful flavor. You're getting a smokiness too, which I feel like is coming from the char, but the seasoning as well, because that's what went into making this product perfect. We really wanted to replicate that street taco flavor. And I really just think there's so many elements to making this good. Not only is this seasoning just like robust and just has everything that you want, little things like adding the cilantro lime onion mix, keeping the juiciness in there, all of those elements really tied together to make a delicious taco. So if making delicious street tacos at home sounds appealing to you, head over to our website at www.dontsisone.com to order your very own taco truck seasoning today. And for a limited time offer, the price is $19.99 through December 31st. So don't miss out. Also, also, for an additional bonus, there's free shipping for the first 20 orders. So get to it. But that is it for today's episode, you guys. I really hope you enjoyed cooking along with me. This is something we are so proud to sell. We are so proud of the flavor, and I think you guys are gonna love it too. So again, I am your host, Victor Salazar, and remember, a house isn't a home without Don't Sassone. We'll see you guys in the next episode.